what is Pythagoras running from? But wait, who is Pythagoras? Well, in a right angled triangle, if we intend to calculate the length of the longest side known as the hypotenuse, then we use this formula c square is equal to a square plus b square. And Pythagoras is regarded as the first person to have discovered this formula. However, in fact very little is known about Pythagoras. But it is widely accepted that there was a community of people known as the Pythagoreans who excelled at mathematics during their time. But this group of prominent mathematicians feared this figure. Yes, it is just a simple square. What could be so scary about it? The backstory here is that the Pythagoreans had strongly advocated that everything in this world could be expressed as whole numbers or ratios of whole numbers. So can a square not be described by whole numbers? Let us see. The whole number 4 describes the number of sides it has, whereas the whole number 90 indicates the angle between each of the sides and the whole number 2 represents the number of diagonals. So far, so good. However, the problem for them is with the length of its diagonals. But what could be the fuss about it? Hmm, let us try to calculate the length of this diagonal by considering the length of the sides to be 1 unit. As you might have realized that the diagonal and these two sides together can be treated as a right angled triangle. In that case, the diagonal becomes the hypotenuse whose length is indicated here by the letter C. As discussed earlier, the formula from Pythagoras theorem is C square equals to A square plus B square. Here the letters A and B indicate the length of the sides which is equal to 1 unit. Therefore, we get C square as 1 square plus 1 square which is equal to 2. Taking the square root on both the sides, we get the answer for C as square root of 2. But how much is square root of 2? Careful there. The Pythagoreans do not like this question one bit. To understand why they are upset, let us examine this equation C squared equals to 2, which in turn means C multiplied by C must be equal to 2. According to the Pythagoreans, the value of the diagonal, indicated here by the letter C, should either be a whole number or a ratio of two whole numbers. Assuming that they are correct, let us check which whole number will be equal to C. Of course, C cannot be equal to 0. Therefore, let us take the next number which is 1. Alright, when C is equal to 1, we get C square as also equal to 1. But we want C square to be equal to 2. Hence, we are short of the target and the value of c, that is, the value of square root of 2, must be greater than 1. In that case, let us assume c to be the next whole number, which is 2. If c is equal to 2, then we get c square as 4. Well, this means we have gone too far. Therefore, c must be less than 2. 2 is too heavy for it. Now we know that c is greater than 1 but less than 2, which means its value should be between 1 and 2. So here it comes. However, we know that there is no whole number between 1 and 2. Prognosis, sorry, square root of 2 is not a whole number. What to do now? We are not short of ideas. Let us try out the next Pythagorean belief of expressing the square root of 2 as a ratio of two whole numbers. For example, if the square root of 2 is equal to 1.5, then we can write it as the ratio of 3 over 2. Or if it is equal to 1.4, then it can be written as 7 over 5. Alright then, let us assume C as equal to P over Q where p and q are whole numbers. Then we get p over q whole square equals to 2, which in turn becomes p square over q square equals to 2. Multiplying by q square on both the sides, we get p square is equal to 2 times q square. Now 
let us focus on this term p square which is basically a pair of p's multiplied together. And what does it indicate? It indicates a perfect square. That is, if p is equal to any of the following numbers, then p multiplied by p would give us these answers, termed as perfect squares. As you can observe, not all whole numbers are perfect squares. Alright, what does the other side of this equation, that is 2 multiplied by q square indicate? As it follows, this pair of q's also indicate a perfect square. However, this pair is not alone as it is multiplied by 2. So, does this manipulate the perfect square in any way? Let us check it out then. If q were to indicate a line of length 5 units, then q square would mean multiplying this line with another identical line of 5 units, which generates a square of 25 units. Now, what about 2 multiplied by q square? Well, this will be equal to 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5. As you can observe, here we have a pair of 5s, but 2 is alone, as the whole number 2 cannot be divided into any factors, it can be multiplied with only one of the 5s. In that case, we get 2 multiplied to this 5 as 10, which is further multiplied by this 5, and it is equal to 50, which is not a perfect square. As 2 could be multiplied with only one of the 5s, it was equivalent to doubling the length of only one side in the square, whereas the other side remained unchanged. And when this line of length 5 units is multiplied with the line of 10 units, it generates a rectangle and not a square. Thus, changing only one side of the square resulted in it not being a square anymore. Implication is that in this equation, the result of this term p square gives us a whole number which is a square. Whereas the term 2q square also gives us a whole number, but it is not a square. Therefore, these two numbers cannot be equal. And hence the term p square cannot be equal to the term 2q square. Tracing it back, our assumption rather the Pythagorean presumption that square root of 2 can be expressed as a ratio of two whole numbers p over q is not correct, which means square root of 2 does not fit into the assumptions made by the Pythagoreans. The realization that the square root of 2 can be something else other than the whole numbers shattered everything that the Pythagorean mathematical belief system was based upon. And instead of sharing this discovery of a new genre of numbers with everyone, they tried to keep it as a secret. However, according to the legends, a Pythagorean named Hippasus leaked this information to other mathematical societies. This anguished the Pythagoreans and they decided to deboard Hippasus in the middle of one of their voyages. Not so lucky. Regardless of what they did, the world embraced this discovery and the Pythagoreans could not escape the consequence of their own equation. So the next time you use this tiny Pythagorean equation, remember that it could put you on a path to unknown number worlds. We hope you enjoyed watching this episode. Do share your thoughts in the comments section below. Also please support us by subscribing to our channel Apple to Mercury. Thank you so much. Until next time, take care.